morning, I'm Echo and for today's vlog, I'm going to give you a tour of my herbs and vegetable garden. My edible garden is set just outside my window apartment in Hong Kong. On this vlog, I will also share with you my personal experience with growing my favorite herbs and vegetables in pots and some tips that I've learned through my gardening journey. So, let's get started! Since my childhood, I have been helping my father in the farm. I helped him plant and harvest sweet potatoes, peanuts, corn, and other root crops. I grew up in a small hut with plenty of fruit-bearing trees all around and a vegetable garden in the yard. We lived a simple life, some days are harder than others, but we never starved. These days, when I visit my family in Bicol, gardening is still one of the most enjoyable bonding activities I share with my siblings. Currently, I live in Hong Kong and I've been growing my edible garden for almost 4 years. Most of the apartments in Hong Kong are small and the cost of living is very high. Luckily, I have a space just outside our window apartment to grow my herbs and vegetable garden. I started with a few herbs that were easy to grow like mint, scallions, parsley, rosemary, and basil. And then eventually, I added some tomatoes, chili peppers, and ginger. Today, my apartment garden is thriving and I couldn't be happier. I truly enjoy this hobby. If you're considering to start your own edible garden, keep watching as I'm about to show you the step-by-step -step of how I grow my herbs and vegetables in pots. You might get your hands dirty, but trust me, it's a lot of fun especially when it's time to harvest your own produce. Tomato is my favorite edible plant to grow in a pot. This seedling is 18 days old and now I'm transferring it in a medium-sized pot. Tomatoes likes it when you plant them deep. I have another growing tomato plant here that is 30 days old. Tomatoes grow well with at least 6 hours of full sun, and if your tomatoes gets 8 hours of sunshine, even better. This one here is 40 days old and flowers have started to appear. By day 58, my tomatoes have started producing fruit. Another rule of thumb when it comes to growing tomatoes is watering it consistently. I find that if you don't water them enough, they get weak. Based from my personal experience, my tomatoes are happier if I water them twice a day during hot season. So I water them in the morning and in the afternoon. I also learned that they thrive in moist soil. If you overwater, the soil will turn soggy and the roots will eventually rot. By day 85, the tomato begins its ripening process, triggering the fruit to start turning red. Now I'm all excited! Day 90, the ripe tomatoes are ready for harvest. I can't wait to make a crazy salad off of this. Homegrown tomatoes are so much richer in taste, it's fresher and it contains higher levels of nutrients. This right here is a sweet and juicy reward after 3 months of caring for them and it's only the beginning. I just love it when I make food and the ingredients are fresh for my garden. Mint I regrow them from cuttings when I harvest mint from my fresh garden. I remove all but the top leaves, then I cut the mint stem just below a node, about 3-4 to four inches in length. I place the stems in a small jar with about an inch of water that I refill or change every 2-3 to three days. Then, I just leave them on my kitchen counter and wait until the roots appear, which can take for a couple of weeks. Once a good root system has developed, it is time to plant them in small pots. Mint thrive in light soil with good drainage. I love growing mint because it needs very little care. It's one of my favorite herbs because of its fresh, cool taste and aromatic scent. To keep them happy, I water them regularly to keep the soil evenly moist.
As the mint grow, I replant them in a larger pot. Within three months, they are ready to harvest. At this point, I recommend cutting the stem to one inch above the soil. This will allow the mint to regrow and ready to harvest again in a month or so. I find that frequent trimming and pruning is the key to keeping my mint happy and at their best. I made a mistake once of not harvesting mint at all because I didn't need it. But as a result, my mint turned old and stale. Young leaves have more flavor than the old ones. So, to keep my mint happy, I harvest them as soon as they're ready. Mint can keep fresh in the fridge for up to 2-3 to three weeks. They also freezes very well. I've got a separate video on food storage and how to keep your fresh produce last longer. If you're interested in that, check out the link of my vlog in the description box. Rosemary Another herb that requires very little care. I love its distinct scent, almost citrus-like aroma. This herb is great for roasting meat or potatoes. And rosemary goes very well when mixed with various cocktails. To grow them from cuttings, snip a couple of healthy stems of rosemary from the mother plant, about 6 to 8 inches in length. Strip off the lower leaves about 1 inch from the bottom end. Then use a knife to shape some of the outer layer off. Then cut the end to create more surface area for the water to get through and for the roots to come out. Put them in a jar with about an inch of water and just leave them on the counter. I refill or change the water every 3 to 4 days. In about 10 days, you'll see that the roots are starting to appear. By day 17, good root system have developed and it's ready for planting. I'm planting them in small pots for now, and as they grow, I will replant them in a larger pot. Rosemary will thrive with at least 6 to 8 hours of full sunlight. I find that it's happier when planted in a well-draining soil. Rosemary doesn't need a lot of water, so water them only as needed to prevent drying out. In 3 or 4 months, you'll see a happy and thriving herb ready for harvest. I also noticed that rosemary likes it when you regularly prune them. So, even if my recipe doesn't call for rosemary, when I notice that the plant's becoming bushy, I trim it down and save the harvest by storing them in the fridge to keep them fresh or I freeze them so they can last even longer. Basil I love this fragrant herb. It smells amazing and they're pretty easy to grow in pots. Today, I'm replanting a 20 days old seedlings. Basil likes to be planted in a well-drained and nutrient-rich soil. It's important to keep the soil moist but not soggy. Otherwise, the roots will tend to rot and the plant will die. Basil needs at least 6 hours of sunlight. And if you're growing them indoors, I recommend placing them in a sunny window. In a month or so, they'll be ready for replanting in a much larger pots with several drainage holes. Within two months, you'll have a thriving basil ready for harvest. I find that pruning basil regularly keeps them happy. I also noticed that younger leaves have more flavor than the old ones. So, what I usually do is harvest a bunch and then I just store them in the fridge to keep them fresh. They can last for about a week or two. But one of my favorite things to do when I harvest basil from my garden is make a homemade pesto. I will include a link on how to make homemade pesto in the description box for you. Another method of growing basil is from the cuttings. When I harvest basil, I remove all but the top leaves. I cut the stem just below a node, about 5 to 6 inches in length. The cuttings already have tiny roots appearing, so I'm planting them already in a pot and simply wait until they grow fuller and ready to harvest. Culantro, also known as sawtooth coriander. The 
taste and aroma is similar to cilantro, only cilantro is more pungent in flavor. It's hard to find in supermarkets, especially here in Hong Kong, so I decided to grow them. You can grow them from seeds, but growing from cilantro cuttings is much faster and easier. These cilantro cuttings are 10 days old. I started growing them in a jar filled with about an inch of water, which I change every 2-3 to three days. Several brand new roots have started to appear, and younger leaves have started growing as well. They're now ready for planting. It's important to place cilantro plant where they can get full sunlight. Based on my personal experience, they're a lot happier during summer because they like warm to hot temperature. After a month, replant them in a larger pot. They thrive with regular pruning, so try to harvest the older leaves as frequent as possible. They'll thank you for it and it will continue to grow. These are scallions or spring onion cuttings that I left standing in a jar of water for 3 days. In just 10 days, new leaves and fuller roots have already appeared. You can plant them already in pots or you can wait for another week. At this point, you can already harvest the leaves if your recipe calls for it. I think I've already harvested twice within a month, that's why my spring onions are looking a bit sad. Spring onions likes well-drained and rich soil. Place them where they can get enough sunlight and water them regularly. I have an old red onion sitting on the counter and I noticed that it was beginning to sprout. So I decided to just plant it with hopes that I can grow a brand new bulb of onion and eventually harvest it. In just 15 days, fully grown leaves have appeared. I then replanted the onion into a larger pot after two and a half weeks. And because my spring onions were looking a bit sad lately, I decided to use my onions long greens instead. They're perfectly edible. They do have a lovely mild onion flavor and you can just use them as you would use a scallion. I grow my spur chilies from seeds. I simply plant them in a small pot And it only takes a week for the seedlings to grow. As they mature, I replant them in a larger pot and within 4 months, my spear chilies are looking great and ready for harvest. To my surprise, I was able to harvest even after day 300. Did you notice the stem? This spur chili plant is old, but it managed to still bear some fruits. So I continued to prune my old spear chilies and by day 329, they started to flower again. I grow my Thai chili from seeds as well. Just like spur chilies, the seedlings grow in just over a week after planting the seeds. Within three months, you're ready to harvest. The seeds I used for planting came from an overripe Thai chili. I removed the seeds, washed them, and let them dry for a couple of days before planting them in a pot. I like to use fresh chilies for my recipe that calls for spicy heat, but if you like it stronger and real hot, I recommend using dried Thai chili flakes instead. Sweet potatoes! My favorite merienda and snack at school, and at work, and even today, sweet potato is part of our staple food. I love sweet potato, that's why I decided to grow them in my own garden. I've perched the sweet potatoes in a container by suspending it using toothpicks and submerging the pointed end in water. After a week, you can see the roots appearing. In 12 days, the sweet potato vines have sprouted and the roots is much fuller. I replace the water in the container every 2-3 to three days. Back in the day, I used to help my father plant and harvest them. I even sold them at the Sunday market when I was only 8 years old. I've picked the sweet potato vines and planted them in a pot on day 17. Another rule of thumb in gardening, always water after planting. Sweet potatoes like the soil moist but not soggy. Don't overwater and make sure that your pots have several drainage holes. Sweet potatoes are ready to harvest typically 4 to 5 months after planting. If you want to find out if my sweet potatoes produce good crops, please hit the like button, follow my Facebook page, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss my next video update on apartment gardening. Potatoes!
Choose the largest pot you can find. Make sure there are several drainage holes at the bottom. Fill the pot with some soil. Place 3-5 to five potatoes and cover them with some more soil. Water them and place the pot in a sunny spot. When the potato starts to sprout, cover them with more soil and water well. Keep doing this until you reach the top of the pot. Potatoes should be kept well watered but not soggy. Potatoes are ready for harvest when the plant starts to flower. I'm excited to find out if my potatoes will produce good crops. I planted this ginger last year and when the leaves had died, I knew it was time to harvest. Growing ginger is quite easy. Now I've got here a leftover ginger pot that have started to grow on its own. So I'm just gonna plant it in a pot, water it well and wait for it to grow. Ginger doesn't require much care. It thrives in a sheltered spot, warm weather, humidity, rich and moist soil. This ginger will be ready for harvest in about 10 to 12 months. Another helpful tip on keeping a healthy, happy and thriving edible garden is feeding your plants with nutrients. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are essential nutrients for growing plants in containers. Some plants like a lot of water and direct sunlight, while other plants thrive in moist soil and shade. Some plants require very little care, while other plants like regular pruning and fertilizing. Speaking from my experience, if you're planning of starting your own garden, put in some time in deciding which herbs and vegetables you want to grow. Find out their characteristics and the type of care they require to keep a happy and thriving garden. I find this hobby healthy and rewarding, and I'm excited to learn more along the way. Using ingredients from my own garden makes me happy and I find it fulfilling. That's what I love about edible gardening. If you're willing to invest a little bit of your time and you'll do it right, this hobby can boost your mood, it's productive and sustainable. If you know any gardening hacks and tips on apartment gardening, kindly leave me a comment below. I'd appreciate any advice from you so I can continue to improve my garden. I'll be doing a vlog series on apartment gardening and I will keep you guys posted on the progress and development of my plants, including failed attempts and experiments. I would be happy to share with you the things I've learned through the process. And I hope this vlog would serve as a proof that it's possible to grow your own produce even in small spaces and hopefully encourage you to start your own garden whether you live in a house or apartment. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, please like and follow my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that I can continue to provide you with insightful videos. If you have questions or suggestions, please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for your support and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!